morning. Good Hello. Morning. Hello from San Francisco. I'm here with Cat Low. Second day, two out of three. So we were here yesterday and we'll be here tomorrow, same time. Um, please tell us if you were with us yesterday. Uh, also tell us where you're from. Uh, and um, just to kind of keep you informed, we have a full day of fun. Um, I'll run quickly through the schedule. And this will be today and tomorrow, same time. So we're here at nine. Tom uh, today at 11, we have Lauren with Mark. And then at one, we have Josh and hosted by Michael. And um, for um, those of you who sent us submissions yesterday, we have a winner uh, from the challenge, which um, I will show you today. It's Buzalifa Walid. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Okay. Um, the design looks awesome. Uh, congratulations. Um, and um, the good news is we're gonna have a new challenge today. So anyone else gets the chance to um, uh, to actually design something and win. And uh, the prize is a one year subscription of Creative Cloud, which wow, is that's really, awesome. it's a prize. really good prize, yeah. Um, but also we have a chat and win. So if you chat with us, you have a chance to win as well. We have a $30 gift card from Moo.com. So send us questions. Uh, let us know where you're from again. Um, anything, we're super excited to be here. Oh, yeah. And um, I can quickly run also from the challenge for today, just so we get it out of the way, so people can start designing as we are um, working mm -hmm. as well. So today's challenge is um, to design a two-plus screen experience for a fashion blog website. So today is all about the web. And uh, you can use XD again, which you can download for free. We have a UI kit, uh, which is awesome. And also you'll get to test your prototyping skills um, since this is part of the uh, challenge. And you'll send us a link to the prototype, which we will review mm -hmm. at the last 30 minutes of our segment. But if you didn't finish, it's kind of a lot. Um, <laughs> you can also send it throughout the day until 2.30. So, um, you have a chance to win. So go design, but also watch because you're gonna learn a lot of things from Kat. And um, we'll probably do a recap now of what we okay. did yesterday. Yeah. Um, well, good morning, everyone from the chat. I see some of you, I recognize their name as you've sent me a message on Behance, like Min, and uh, asking me about the questions with uh, what kind of books should I check out. Oh yes, uh, we yes. do have that today, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, we do have that. Um, so I guess we'll just switch to my computer now, and then we'll I'll just do a brief intro for those of you who who didn't turn tune in yesterday. So, hello, my name is Catherine Lowe. Um, welcome to our live show for two hours. Um, so yesterday we actually had a couple of questions um, regarding where can I actually learn more about UX. So I actually went into my Behance profile and I posted a project as the first thumbnail. And in there I'm going to uh, write, or I actually wrote a bunch of resources that you can look at. Oh, that's great. And throughout our segment, um, I will continue to add the files or assets um, presentation from yesterday. And I will add in the presentation today after we're done. And you can kind of go there and look at the files and see what we talked about yesterday in detail. Um, but long story short, um, in terms of the user experience books, um, I don't really, we don't, I don't feel like I really read a lot of the books because by the time um, they're written, it's probably a little bit out of date. So mm -hmm. typically I learn a lot from uh, listening to podcasts, daily design podcasts, or um, write-ups on Medium, or write-ups from, um, significant influencers in the field, other designers that tend to kind of write blogs and share their ideas. So I've posted a bunch of links to those people and Oh great. Do you yeah. have any links to your favorite podcasts? I'm oh, always yeah, looking sure. for Let's new take ones. A look. <laughs> so here are some of the small write-ups. Um, the so these are the books up top. And here are three podcasts that you can 
check out. There's always 99% invisible, which I like. Mm, yeah. um, design matters, and also some good reading. These are some of the things that I go to in terms of just browsing around um, just different ideas that people have in UX. And it's kind of difficult to sort of write a, um, a one uh, tracked solution for UX because UX is really just about solving problems of a use case and every business has a different use case. Every business has a mm -hmm. different challenge. So not one solution fits all. And how do you actually go about doing the right UX? It's mm -hmm. really depends on the problem. And I think honestly that if the solution can fit the business well, um, that's a good solution, meaning that the business can support your solution, they have the budget, they have the manpower to support that, and it's also something that they um, want to have done, and also it aligns with all their goals in the future. I mean, I think that would, that's already saying that this is a good design because it solved the problem for them. Mm -hmm. So here's mm -hmm. just some of the things that I like to read here and keep up, and there's a lot of people that tweet on Twitter, send links, so just kind of stay with the community. Those are fantastic uh, resources. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm sure we'll ha you'll have more to add by the time we're done with day three. <laughs> right. So yeah, I mean, send us questions. questions. The, yesterday we had some fantastic questions. Um, hello. Hello. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a little bit about me. If you didn't tune in yesterday, I got three new things to talk about. First. Um, I saw this image on my Chrome browser, and I use this uh, plugin called Momentum. So oh, whenever you, use that you too. well, today's Yosemite Valley. So whenever you open up a new tab, it kind of loads a new image. I think mine's probably different. Is it? Yeah, mine's different. Mine's from <laughs> Argentina, and there's always an inspirational quote at the bottom. Yeah, that's a pretty cool plugin. Yeah. So one day I kind of opened this up, and it was a picture of the subway, which is actually this image. So I just thought, you know what? That was pretty cool. I would like to take this picture myself. So I went to Zion National Park and took this picture on the GoPro. And this is actually an image that I took from a video because my iPhone got smashed. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and you said you went there without like being too prepared? Yes. You're not so prepared brave. At You're all. so brave. <laughs> I think the theme for today is just to do something out of your comfort zone and just try new stuff. You yeah. never know, you know, what you're gonna get. So be same, brave. Be brave. <laughs> Second, um, this is another story of being brave. Um, one, during my, I guess, the 13 years I've been designing, one day I was like, you know, it'd be really cool if I had the opportunity to make one of those um, websites for a movie. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was uh, World War Z, which is the zombie movie with Brad Pitt. Oh, I haven't seen it. Has <laughs> anyone seen that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, has anyone seen that movie? Um, anyway, so I was really interested in that. I kind of wanted to see what um, designing a website for a movie would be like. And it's not something like I, I have or in New York. It's definitely something out in LA um, where they film a lot of the, the movies. So I found a agency that actually does most of that work and I just sent them an email. Just like that. I just like, hey, I'm a designer. So cool. Do you guys have anything you would like me to do? I would do it. Like, let me try. And they said yes? Yes. That's so cool. But so then this <laughs> This campaign and this image is actually, they were saying, hey, let's create a website that engages the user mm -hmm. to watch the movie. So when you watch the movie or the trailer of the movie, <clears throat> it actually geolocates you and it puts you as an item on this map as being infected by the zombie. Oh. And as cool. you get infected more and more, um, up to a certain point, which is basically like, how, how, how much have you watched this trailer? <laughs> Um, new trailers pop out and new things wow. are on the page. So it, that's just a, a sort of thought that, you know, you can always cold email someone because you really have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. You might, you know, find that someone will give you opportunity to do something and that's pretty cool. Yeah, and yesterday you were saying how it, post your work on Behance because you never know and you never know when you're going to get noticed, right? Mm -hmm. Right. 
And yeah, that's just another one of my <laughs> tidbits. This is another one. Cool. So you don't know me as, like you don't see me as being an illustrator. And I don't really illustrate icons that much. So one day I was like, hey, um, I'll draw some icons for Christmas. No idea why, I just felt like it. And then I just posted it on Behance and on Dribbble and I just gave them for free because I was like, well, who's gonna want these? I didn't have a reason for them, I just tried it out. And Smashing Magazine contacted me and said, hey, do you, would you, can, I, can we have them on our site? That's so awesome. I said, sure. They're really cute. <laughs> right. So, I mean, try new things. I mean, um, do some illustration, do some photography, mm -hmm. um, work in web, and be more of a well-rounded designer so that you can improve your skills and see things in a different way, or you know, all these disciplines all improve your skill set as a designer. So mm -hmm. I want to tell everyone to kind of try new stuff. <laughs> yeah, try new stuff. Uh, should we go into yesterday? Yep. Oh, cool. Yeah, these are the, this is Top the wisdom, early morning wisdom. Yes. <laughs> okay, so as you know, I've been a designer for 13 years. Um, background in print, packaging, and web. Uh, last six years, I focused more on iOS design and iOS uh, development. Currently, I am a um, freelance de uh, designer, and I primarily work at Martian Craft, which is an all remote agency and we developed a lot of software for iOS and web and different platforms. So check us out if you are interested. So to recap yesterday's project, and for those of you who didn't tune in yesterday, um, we are working on a business called Pollen Inc., which is a, a bespoke, made-to-order business that kind of put together your custom choices for an arrangement. And they're very special because they source flowers from all over the world. They have access to different types and color. And they have a lot of experience in putting together beautiful pieces. So the business asked us to um, create a new channel for sales and build engagement with their loyal customers. And basically, they want to get them engaged. And we actually, yesterday, we went through this simple design process, which is basically we define the strategy, ideate, prototype, build, and analyze. So yesterday we laid down the groundwork, which is we took time to define, understand the strategy of our customers, like who they are, um, what segment they're in, what they want out of an arrangement. And we went through kind of building a system, a style guide, components, and how to basically um, put the components and uh, styles into the artboard. And we set up a limited set of key screens that basically what we call the minimal viable product, which is the, the smallest and simplest form of the product as possible to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And to recap, um, when we made that, um, these were our three top points. As a current customer, I want a convenient way to order flowers so I don't have to go to the store. Um, I want to browse prices before deciding what to purchase and also to order it in a fast way and have it delivered quickly. So to go um, through the top five items, um, this is what we designed yesterday. We'll just finish it up in terms of the visual design. Um, these are the five things. It's presenting a wide selection of products. It's showing uh, availability of what's available at the time. It's allowing the user to tailor their pricing and changing the filters. It's showing a really fast checkout because it's only showing that you can pay with Apple Pay. And I'm hoping that the presentation of the design and color, fragrance, and uh, sight is very attractive. So right now, I wanna show and start going through um, the next phase, which is to wire it up as a prototype. This would be really helpful actually for our design challenge today. So for anyone who hasn't used a prototyping in XD, um, and you will need to do it for the challenge. Mm -hmm. So keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> 
So obviously to start prototyping, there's a link right here, prototype, you can click that to go into the prototype mode and click back. And what I like to do is I like to use a shortcut, obviously. Mm. Um, it's control tab to switch between the two. I never use that. You're teaching me all these new shortcuts. <laughs> I love shortcuts. <laughs> So the reason why I like that is because, you know, sometimes there are things on the artboard that I need to change and I just quickly can just switch back and forth without mm -hmm. clicking here. Um, so obviously when you're in a prototype mode, the house icon is showing the launch screen. So you basically click that. Oh, sorry. Click the, actually the title of the screen and you're going to get a tiny little arrow here and you can click this arrow and drag to the board that you want to. So I'm going to click the next one and you get this little overlay. It says the target, which is the intro, that screen and transition is dissolve and easing and the timing. So do you usually change those or do you just use the default ones? I don't really change it that much. Mm -hmm. I just sort of uh, link it up first mm -hmm. and the way that I kind of like to work is I like to press this play button mm -hmm. that actually allows you to see what's going on so when you're clicking on the board um, you can kind of see what it looks like wait wait yeah. where is it you should click through it uh-huh here we go okay yeah so the whole blue area is the touch um, zone, right where you click. Okay, or right. tap. Right, 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 right. <laughs> okay, so this is obviously the launch screen. So obviously, in the real world, the launch screen shows up for a few seconds, There's then goes away. Mm -hmm. But we can't really make that happen automatically. So they'll just have to touch the screen, and then the second screen is what actually is the main screen. Mm -hmm. So next, obviously, uh, we want the user to tap this icon or, or the button. Let's get started. So to click this icon, you click that, and now you see that arrow, and you can do the same thing. You can drag that over and say, all right, now that's gonna be the next screen. Mm -hmm. So the next screen, um, so what I'm showing here is an off and on state. What I'm showing is that as the user taps on any one of these colors, this actually reflects. So just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna quickly just wire it up in a way that I'm going forward first. So you're just wiring up the whole screen? Because I know it's going one yep. way. Yep. Just to kind of... Um, to make it quick. To make it quick. So I just I just stop here because I know that this is the customization screen and okay. I just pause from there. Okay. Um, so what I do is just check it out really quick. Um, click the long screen and you can actually use this as an interactive prototype. So you just go ahead and click this, check it. I'm like, all right, click that. Go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Click those. Looks pretty good. It looks really good. Yeah, and actually the default transitions work really nicely. Because mm -hmm. they're the right dissolves. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So the dissolve is a little bit different than usual. You could have dissolve or push. Yep. So, you know, to edit that, obviously you just click the little arrow and you mm -hmm. can definitely just click one of these and change it. So yep. slide up, slide right. So so that's why I like kind of having the screen open so that you can kind of click this and see the transition right yep. away and say, oh, that's not that's not what I want. Um, and go ahead and like tr try different ones until it's kind of like the interaction you were thinking it would happen. It's but so, it's instantaneous. It's so easy compared to anything else, right? Um, so there's a new feature overlay, right? Yep. Yeah, so there's a new feature overlay, and I actually only made the overlay for these. Oh, cool. Instead of this, um, because it's kind of easy to just go through mm -hmm. it and quickly wire it up. Mm -hmm. There's another thing here is that um, the screen size here is a lot longer than a typical computer, like a, a sort of, it's very long and I want it to scroll. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, I switch back to design mode or control tab and so I click this out of the way and I know sort of, well, I, actually on this one, the first one is this one. This dragger bar is actually showing where it actually scrolls down. Mm -hmm. The reason why it looks kind of weird like this is because the top area, I actually want it to be locked. 
So in order to lock the top area and say, don't, when I scroll down, don't move the screen, I need to click the top area and click this box, fix positioning when scrolling. Mm, so when cool. I do that, um, now it's going up, but the top part is locked. The reason why it's going up is because the layers are not in the right order. Oh, so you have to have the, the navigation at the top. Right, so yep. to do that, open up the layer panel. As you can see, I have colors, nav, bar in the bottom, so that's in the wrong order. And you're so well organized. Look <laughs> at all the naming, good job. <laughs> so basically what you need to do is click the layer and drag it up so it will look right. And you could lock see? any element like this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, I, so that's kind of cool. So I do the same thing to this. Mm -hmm. Fixed positioning. And it's kind of awesome that I could just see it right away without right. you don't have clicking to, like, on something else. Save a file, export it, go bring it into something else. Mm -hmm. It's instantaneous. So I know that's going to happen, so I might as well just put that on mm -hmm. the top for everyone. There's a good question of. What's the best way to back up and save your file to prepare to send to the client? It's just one, it's one button to send to a client. It's super easy. Mm -hmm. um, do you wanna quickly show that? Because sure. I think that's how, so in the challenge, this is how you're gonna send us your file. You're gonna export a link. Um, right, so this button right here for exporting, you can click that and it says share. So you can either publish a prototype, publish the specs or manage the links. So you can do the publish the prototype, and you can type in the name, allow comments, full screen, and you can just, well, I already actually published it, so you can do an update if you already did, mm -hmm. or click this, and you can actually see the link. And your client can actually comment directly in the, in the prototype on the particular part of the screen too, mm -hmm. which is really handy. So this is what you're going to be sending us for the challenge, um, just the link. Mm -hmm. So right now it's just updating the, the mm -hmm. link, but you can also type in the permissions. So if you want to send it as a private, you can type oh, in yes, your you email do. and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be public. Mm -hmm. um, and actually XD has a new release, um, the, this past release for a August mm -hmm. um, has the ability to collaborate for enterprise accounts. So you could actually add uh, people oh. to the account, oh. awesome. which is really nice. Yeah. So I'm going to continue just fixing these top areas because I know they need to be locked. Mm -hmm. So for this one, it's not the top area, but I just would like to have the top area fixed positioned. And I just need to make sure it's on the top of the layer. Mm -hmm. Same with that. Mask group. Sorry for the bad naming. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew anything. <laughs> you can do it after the fact or before. I know. I should. Sorry, team. So let me see, if I just pick a screen and run it. Looks pretty good. And click that. Well, I don't want that. <laughs> Switch to prototype mode and click that one. Change the interaction to maybe slide or, I'm sorry, push left is probably something I want to do. Let's see. Yep. Yep. And I select those, click that, and for this, I actually want to click this icon here to drop down the filter, the mm. filters. So I can just actually click on this icon or this giant area. So what I discovered is if you hold, I think it was command, you can actually go into the layer of the actual symbol. Mm -hmm. So then you can actually be very precise and say I want to click only this area. So I click, I actually select the icon itself instead of this bar and position that over. So right now I just, I don't want any transition for this. 
So I want to put it as none. So it will just appear instantaneously. So to check that work, I can just click that. Oh, that's nice. And it's instant. Mm -hmm. And obviously you need a way to close out of it. So I would do the same thing here. Um, click that area, go back. So to go back, you could always do previous artboard or select that particular artboard name. A previous artboard would work just as yeah. well. And this is a good idea when you should be naming your artboards when you're prototyping. Yes. Otherwise, when you're looking at the list, it's going to just be like, oh, I, I don't I know what they are. Yeah. That actually Our happens board one, a lot. Artboard <laughs> two. <laughs> yes. On <coughs> title one, on title two, on title three. Yeah. OK. So yes, so this button is also the one that goes back. Uh, arrangement, none. OK. So No transitions. Because you want it to just something quick, right? Yep. Okay. So maybe this is the wrong, it's too small. The so hit area? Yeah, so maybe I just do this for you the You can hit also area. do like an invisible box. Okay. To make it bigger. So you would draw a box behind this box? Yeah, you draw a box, I mean, for touch area. So for mm -hmm. um, iOS devices would be 44 by 44 pixels mm -hmm. and no no outline and no fill. Mm -hmm. So go switch to design mode, draw a box first, type in the size. Yep. Put that box underneath the icon itself. And then just remove yep. everything. Remove magic. <laughs> it's really handy for touch zones. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. And just make sure that's that okay so to just to double check that's pretty cool yep so then th for this screen i want it to be linked to the top item and this is a repeat grid so mm. if i click this to prototype it would actually highlight the whole thing and i don't want that so and you don't want to remove pieces of it, right? Because right. you might want to edit it after. Right, I don't want to break it up, so mm -hmm. you just do Command to select that layer specifically, and then you can actually just select the symbol. So maybe you should just name this like Layla and use that as the hit point. Mm -hmm. And for maybe this one, I do push, uh, push left. So you're going, moving in, right? Yep. Oh, that's nice. In. Yep. Then I want to move out with the back. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to hit the box. Oops. <laughs> Should use a bigger computer. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that, that will be push right. No, actually, no. OK. <laughs> mm-hmm. We have a chat and win countdown, so send us questions and you have a chance to win a $30 gift card yeah, from so. Moo. So you can print your business cards. Or uh, posters or uh, oh, yes. those little four by six oh, uh, flyers nice. I mm -hmm. print sometimes. Uh, those are very handy. Okay, so yeah, let's go over the overlay mode, which I think was a newer, oh, yes. newer thing. Yes. And so for this area, I have sort of the um, product detail of this flower. I mm -hmm. have the description, the type of flower that consists of in here, the meaning, the color, occasion, fragrance, and reviews. So I want the user to be able to edit their choices. So I have a button here called edit. And the idea is I hit the edit, um, I have the overlay that is above this that I can either choose between colors or flower and they actually hit apply to apply this edit. So in, the, in these screens, what I've just demonstrated is you could just duplicate the artboard and then repeat it or you can do it this way which is a much uh, easier way to do it but I kind of like setting it up first so I can see what it really looks like and then we're going into the prototype mode, I will just strip out everything after the fact because okay. I'm not really sure what I'm about to do. Mm -hmm. So to do this, I click um, 
the overlay or I click the product detail and I point it to the overlay and instead of the transition I actually click on overlay and what it does is take this artboard and places it over and then you can see the green line it kind of shows you where it placed it and it placed it obviously the top mm -hmm. and what I actually want to do is I want this overlay to slide from bottom up so I, all I would do is click this arrow and I look you can see it's magic it's ghosted <laughs> yay <laughs> it's ghosted you have a screen yes and I want to position it to the bottom and the bottom is actually where the dragger line or dragger line is would be so mm -hmm. I want to position it kind mm -hmm. of on the bottom here mm -hmm. and then it's like ghosted yeah <laughs> yeah it's chat and win time awesome. yay <laughs> so send us questions um, and you have a chance to win we'll be right back Question. Okay, what did you guys eat for dinner last night? That's a good one. Laptop? We had the same exact <laughs> dinner, the whole table. <laughs> last night for dinner, we all ordered the same thing except Paco, our yes, vid <laughs> our video guru. But it was delicious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ravioli, sweet, sweet potatoes, potatoes top, pizza, laptop, egg, fish dish. <laughs> That's what we had. <laughs> Chicken soup. Lots of pie. Vodka? Okay, pie for dinner. <laughs> <clears throat> Tons of people are eating hot dogs for dinner. I know. <laughs> Pizza. Yeah. So many eggs. I know. Tamales. Oh, sounds good. Coffee? Really? That's what I had for dinner. <laughs> I had like six <laughs> you did. cups of coffee. <laughs> hey, and we have a winner. Alan. Villain, I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry, villain tongue. Like, I can't. Congrats. I'm sorry. Congratulations. You win. you win $30 gift card from moo.com. So you can have amazing printed collateral. And for anyone who didn't win, you actually have the chance to get 15% off if you go to moo.com slash Adobe Live. So everyone wins. Everybody wins. And we win because we know <laughs> what you ate. <laughs> oh, congrats. Yes, Moo is really good. And we're back to overlays. Back to overlays. So we just showed you how to ghost the overlay over your screen. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And what um, would you use overlays for in case anyone is not clear? Yeah, anything that kind of if your UI is trying to pop up or something like that in mm -hmm. a modal or a drop down that is actually a pop up, then this is a cool overlay. Mm -hmm. I mean, technically, you can do the overlay for this. Um, you don't really need to show this entire screen. You mm -hmm. could just take away the the elements, the elements completely mm -hmm. by hiding it. You can just turn off. Well, the reason why it looks like that now is because I have it pro projected. So turn that off. I could just totally take everything away from the screen, hide it, mm -hmm. and just only have the ellipses. So they'll show on the other screen. Right. Um, so this, you could overlay this area on the mm -hmm. top, but I think it's best if you actually adjust the board size so that it would be kind of small and not be this big. Mm -hmm. But you could, yeah, you could rewire it in this way where you can say, all right, now I don't want to transition, I want to overlay. So and just show the circles on top. See? Yeah, but it's nicer to actually see them next to it. I, I always think better when everything's laid out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's sort of, our, we had the same process. It's kind of nice to see it all because you want to see if that visual makes sense. And yeah. if you wanted to edit it, then it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. um, but I would just do it like this so that you're not like de deleting your file. And maybe that's a better way when you're in a prototype mode. Um, so you can kind of see what's so you're just hiding. Layer still. Yeah. Yep. Or you good. know, you could you could just make it smaller and it would be much cleaner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this UI kit's so difficult to use. Where did oh. you get your MacBook Pro cover? Very important question. Amazon. <laughs> I think it was like only twelve dollars or she something. She also has a cover for her keyboard. Oh yeah, I'm 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 crazy. I have a cover that looks just like my keyboard. 
<laughs> and it actually kind of it's not as clicky clacky. My keyboard is so loud. This is why I'm <laughs> using a pen. <laughs> so yep, let's go back to wiring this up. So I have a segmented controller here that flips from color to flowers. So I need to wire this up. So color is obviously this screen, and flower is this. Maybe I should. There's a lot of reordering. Yep. Yeah. This is what happens after you design. You kind of after like you design, fix up your layers. And you gotta make <laughs> it look really good for your client. Mm -hmm. Make them feel like it's a real thing, right? And you're gonna show us how it looks on the phone. Yeah. She has the camera ready to go, so you can see how it's gonna actually work on the phone. Yep. So you can check your awesome. type sizes and make sure it's looking real. Mm -hmm. Do you usually show it to the client on the phone? No, they actually just go to the link on their phone, so they're actually viewing it from their phone. Oh, they that's definitely really don't good. look at it on the computer, right? Because you want them to be in the right mindset, right? Right. So mm -hmm. they they would have well, first you need to have the Adobe XD app installed on your phone, and then you just kind of open that up. And oh, okay, yeah. So do do we want to try that now and just see what I it looks know. like? Are you ready? Oh, I'm not ready, but yeah. <laughs> we can do it a little bit later. Okay, maybe okay. just do the overlays because I want to see what they look like. <laughs> yep, okay. So to check, just go Well, I don't want to slide off. <laughs> So that was obviously the wrong interaction. So I go to overlay. I wanted to slide up. Yeah. Let's go back. Yay! Or maybe I don't want it to slide up. Maybe it's none. Can you add a gray background? Kind of like. Oh, yeah, yeah, to... right. How do you do that? You're teaching me all these tricks. <laughs> Maybe you could teach me something. I think I would, what I would do is just make this uh, the same size and then put a gray background to it. Right. Is that what, is it, do, do you have any tricks for that? I don't know. I, I don't usually <laughs> fake that one. Because really? the engineers I work with just do it. <laughs> I don't have clients. Actually, so. I, I, I faked it here. Nice, yeah. So this is pretty much the same thing. I, I would just you know make this screen pretty much the same size as this first. Mm -hmm. So, to do that, I can just, well, it's actually pretty easy to kind of edit after the fact. You just have to switch back to design mode and make sure you have the right it's size. 812, yep. Mm -hmm. Really simple to edit. Put that towards the bottom. I'm just gonna copy it. It's just a black background. Make sure that's on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um. So now, what you want to do is switch back to prototype. There's a lot of switching back and forth. Which is actually really fast. Like, yep. you just go like that. It's like yep. one button away. Yeah. Um, no exporting of anything. Right. Um, and then just make sure it's positioned correctly now. Because um, right. it has to be at the top. So right now, you could just do transition instead of overlay, because it, it would be kind of the same thing to me, I feel like. Oh, I guess. Mm. Let me see. Okay, click edit. Wait, what <laughs> happened? Kidding. <laughs> it turned dark. Oh. I feel like this. Uh, this overlay, maybe, maybe it's not gonna maybe, work. Maybe the overlay functionality doesn't work when you have a black background. Yeah. Maybe you can only overlay, you can only do the transition and mm, not the overlay. Yeah. Or you maybe, probably don't need it. Or maybe it's because it's the opacity is not. Let right. me see. Let's see. I, you know what I think? I think it's confused. So Just in order to kind of, <laughs> yes, 
So if it's confused and you don't want it, you don't want it anymore, just go ahead and remove it. Mm-hmm. Maybe we don't need it. So turn it back to transition. Um, delete it first. Just start over and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Click transition. Overlay, edit color. Click that. Play the file. Click edit. Maybe it just doesn't like the I black background. Yeah, it probably doesn't. You don't really need it. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing the the annoying art director who's like, do this and then don't do it. Move no, it it's cool pixels, because sometimes twenty pixels to the right. I mean, sometimes that's what ha that's what how you find like little oh things oh. that don't work. Oh, actually, I I think I know what was wrong. What was wrong? This thing it had the size it had the size previously and mm -hmm. it has like the scroll. Oh yeah. Maybe yes. This is my best guess. Yes. But does it but but does it make it transparent though? I don't know. And now it's black. Huh. Let's go back to design and click through this screen. Oh, I took it out. That's probably why. I don't understand why it was sure. black though. Oh, to just make yeah, it. Oh, because there was nothing there. Oh. I deleted it. Okay. So now. Let's see. <laughs> uh, I don't think it likes opacity. It doesn't like it. Feature request. Yeah. Where? Who do we send feature requests to? I think to? On, actually on the website, you can submit feature requests and then the XD team will prioritize them. I mean, this is how they basically build the app is was feature requests by uh, customers and then whatever was most requested got prioritized to be first. Mm -hmm. And now they have every month there's a new release with new features. Made um, magic. We are getting some tips on what it should be. It needs to be Actually, an overlay, a not a transition. Yep. Had a button wrong. Yep. Done. Okay. But you know what though? Like when I look at the screen as is, when mm -hmm. it's just this, yep. it is kind of a little bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. So basically then you would just copy this product detail mm -hmm. and put this over. Yep. It is a little weird to see this as one of the screens because you're just like, well, this is a kind of extra. Yep. So you can, yeah, so if it's gonna be an overlay, you can put the overlay over here or just transition. If it's transition, I think it just doesn't take the opacity. Mm -hmm. But it's Yeah, overlay so was ways. good though, because you're, you're showing how it would work. Okay. Yeah, cool. Well done. Let's check the screen, see if it actually scrolls down correctly. Nope. <laughs> so obviously the, the Z index is wrong for the ones on the bottom. Oh yeah, so you want it to scroll yes. in the back, right? Right. So I switch back to design. I like that you Ooh. added a photo of the person who's actually making the bouquet. Yeah, makes it more personable, I think. Oh, that looks so nice. I love it. Oh, and also these buttons are not supposed to. Oh yeah, they're not supposed to that? scroll. So this is why it's pretty awesome because you can see right away, you know, what's what you need to edit. How are you gonna dock them? Um, it's pretty simple. You can just click the fixed positioning when scrolling. Oh, that's perfect. Yay, and it's fixed. Nice. Instantaneously. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so just go ahead and finish. This. Okay, we need to wire that up with the overlay. So we're gonna look at uh, challenges in 45 minutes. Awesome. Cool. I'm excited. Yesterday we saw some good stuff. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Okay, flowers. 
Oh, this thing's. Oh, this thing. Well, how I didn't. Did you, how did you get the background on the other one? Oh, because it's. I just it's overlaid got a, oh, you this overlaid. one, uh -huh. and it was already there. So, so you would have to do this for this one as well. Sorry, I messed you up. <laughs> I'm trying to slow her down because she was too fast <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna make you slower. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Okay, just make this uh, design, A12, okay. top, bottom. Okay, this. And you know what's cool is that even mm -hmm. though that I've changed it, mm -hmm. all the links still are intact. Mm -hmm. I can drag them anywhere I want. It's still there. No changes to that. That's pretty cool. And it's nice how it, it aligns. Break. <laughs> yeah, and it's nice how it aligns your boards in case you want them to be perfectly organized, or like the right spacing. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah, right. That's kind of one of the annoying things about um, some other programs is that it doesn't click or like lock in place. Mm -hmm. So then when you're kind of dragging it, you can see yeah the pink. Yeah, it's nice it to have nice your neat. files <laughs> organized. Yeah. <clears throat> Send us any questions, by the way. Well, cat is working. <laughs> What's your favorite flower? I'm actually one of the people that don't know that many flower types, so. <laughs> well, you're making an app. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna say something generic, like roses, peonies, <laughs> lilies. What's everyone's favorite flower? Oh this yeah, that's a good question. question. Yes, what's your favorite flower? This is our How much you want to bet people are going to type roses? Well, we'll Other see. than roses. We'll see. <laughs> also, it'll be interesting to see where, um, depending on where they're from, what's their favorite flower. So maybe tell us, tell us where you're from <laughs> also when you tell us what flower is your favorite. Oh, that's awesome. Gerber daisy. Dahlia. Nice. Hibiscus. I love hibiscus. We don't have any in New York, unfortunately, but we're both wearing black today, representing New York colors. <laughs> <laughs> we showed up together, we're like, this is the black team. <laughs> yeah, today is black. Mm -hmm. I love tropical flowers too, yes, northeast. Cherry blossom, yes, bird of paradise, yes. There's someone from Taiwan originally. Oh yeah, cool, Eric Su. And we have Birds of Paradise. Oh, those are so beautiful. Okay, I'm still fixing this. You know, after doing this, I pretty much prefer if we just Delete this top area and just make them make them overlays normal overlays. Yeah, I hmm. guess you do this. Uh, I mean, it's kind of nice that you can do it really quickly. Change your mind. Be like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, if it's easier. I think also when you do an overlay that flips to another overlay, you might not remember that the bottom is actually this screen. Oh. Because what I'm doing now is flipping between the two, so then you would have to overlay this one on top of this one, and when you do that, the back is like gone. Really? I don't really know what you mean. Does it do that? Let me I see. don't know. I, did, I don't think I've ever used this scenario where I had two overlays. <laughs> how, so how do you actually flip between the two? I don't do know. Do you create two? I haven't been using, I have to be honest, I haven't used this new overlay functionality. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm learning. So do you just do transition like one I've way? I've been doing transition, yeah. Yeah. You know, do whatever works for you. You can copy it and do, actually I feel like the transition is probably the easiest thing. You just copy this uh, command D. Yeah. And then you have that, but yeah, it's all linked together. And then you just put, place mm -hmm. this over mm -hmm. and you can go one straight line or you can kind of do this fancy overlay. I'm um, gonna try it. I'm gonna try it for sure. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> I'm also from Brooklyn. Cool. Lavender. Love lavender. Hibiscus Northern Varieties. Cool. Do 
So you can remove um, whatever you've selected by tapping on the X, right? Oh, in your designs. You mean the um, yep. the link? Yeah, you can just click. No, the no, no, arrow. no. Oh, for your designs. So you have two types of flowers. If you want to remove. Oh, one. you mean the design? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. in here, I'm basically surfacing what you selected previously. Mm -hmm. So. Th these are the so three. So the selected colors are the top, and then you have the rest, so you could actually make selections, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that actually, it, you would have to scroll tons right. to kind of change it. That's really that good. <laughs> that's a really good idea. Uh, I yeah. think that's what a lot of clients say all the time, is like, I don't want to scroll. Yeah, and it's hard to see what's selected. I also have an, a thing that I discovered about dragging this is that when you're clicking on a specific layer and you want to click it on this particular layer, you can't actually group it together. Mm -hmm. If you have it all exposed, you can actually click that and then a position it over. But if okay. you're if you have a folder, it wouldn't do that. Oh, that's I don't know very... if that's something I just noticed or it's just it, like for example, if I had all of these things not grouped and out. I can actually click this and then, well, this one has to do it too. So I'm like, lost. <laughs> I think when you group something together, yes. it's seen as a block. Right. But if I say, if I wanted if to separate. link this to this particular one, oh. you actually would have to ungroup it together. Oh, I got it, got it. Okay. It's so. just something I, I okay. just discovered. But yeah, I think it's probably easier if I just go back and just mm -hmm. remove it. Make it simple. Is black your color? <laughs> I feel like black is the color. Oh, black is the color of New York City. <laughs> yep. I stopped wearing black, by the way. But you're but wearing black. I'm in San Francisco <laughs> now. I'm visiting. <laughs> in New York, I don't wear black. Oh, you don't? What no. colors do you wear? I try to wear anything else, but not black. I'm blocking black. Are I'm you trying to bring color. Are you trying to be... I was going to wear green, but I was going to disappear, so <laughs> I had to change my outfit choice. <laughs> Have you ever seen, like, uh, Queen Elizabeth, and she wore, like, a green suit, and then they put her... Oh, because like, we were behind a green, green screen. screen. Yeah. So they put, like, funny I mean, we were in front of a her, green like, screen. Pizza. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Could actually wear your app. <laughs> Some of those bouquets are really nice. I mean, you got those assets from stock? No, so, so this, some of them are from stock. So these bouquets are actually from urbanstem.com where you okay. can actually order them. But the these flower choices, you I just grabbed them from stock. Yeah. Because it was a little bit hard to f well, you could. I have some pictures of the stock photos that I found, mm -hmm. but I couldn't really ID what they they are. <laughs> So I kind of took the easy route where I worked mm -hmm. backwards. I said, well, I wanted to build this prototype. I said, yep. oh, I wanted these, and they would all look like roses and lavender, mm -hmm. things that I can identify. Just work backwards. I'm like, okay, I want kind of dark light and pastel. So mm -hmm. I made those colors to make right. it look like it's more realistic. So how does it work with clients and showing assets like this, right? Mm -hmm. If you're using stock, it's pretty good, right? Because you, I mean, they usually have... Um, kind of the watermark, mm -hmm. and you can buy them directly. You can actually mm -hmm. buy them from the application. From mm -hmm. You can buy them from... Yeah, like you showed me yesterday, link. file, open CC libraries. Yep. You can get the stock photos from yep. uh, Adobe, and I have all these saved, and you can actually click and drag mm -hmm. and change it instantaneously. Yep. I mean, that looks pretty cool. That looks good. Mm -hmm. And there's thousands of pictures. I mean, I could there's even so use many. that. As the picture yep. on the top area. What I like to do is just kind of browse around the stock photos and kind of get the sense and feel of mm -hmm. what you want to. And, and there's the visual search that you showed me yesterday, which is really help helpful because you can look at the right colors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Back 
to rotate this. Okay, let's see if that works. We're getting there. Oh, this is nice. Yay. All right, we'll call it done. It worked. Yay. <laughs> I tried to slow her down. She came it out worked. of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one is basically this page product detail, but I made an extra one, which is actually the details of this particular flower. Oh, so if you click on similar flower, what is it? No, so like, so like, for example, you you pick these oh, and you're like, okay. what, are, what, are, what are snapdragons? Oh, what is a snapdragon? I guess it's this flower that I dropped in. I know. I'm just joking. It's not. It's I just don't know a, what it is. It's a type of flower. So we're like, you know, to, in order to like help educate mm -hmm. what flowers they are, um, you can have a flower kind of description site or description page mm -hmm. where you can actually click that flower, tells you a little bit about that, and then give you arrangements. This is misspelled. Mis <laughs> arrangements that are including those. Right. And you had something where. Actually, there was a meaning for the flower. Yeah. Did I saw that? Yeah, I think right that's here. super nice. Yeah. Because it kind of helps, like, the idea of, like, you don't really know what right. flowers are appropriate for that occasion. Right. And depending on the on the country, I think it's a very right. different uh, meaning, too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, if you're trying to buy sympathy flowers or something, what should you use? Mm-hmm. Most people don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's why they go to a florist. Yep. So for this, I, I'm just going to pick the peony one. Do an overlay, press the X, go back, and then test it out. We have 30 minutes till we look at submissions, but de keep designing. Um, because uh, if we don't look at your submission, the rest of the segments for today can. So you have until 2.30 actually um, to send mm -hmm. designs. Today is harder challenge because it's more than one screen. Oh yeah? Yeah. Do, you, and they have to use do people have actually like ever design the challenge on live? Like the person actually, like oh, you work on. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Okay. It is black because I forgot to put the white background mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. So I'll go in and fix it. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, press this. Use. Yeah, check. everything's scrolling. Check to see if there's some. That's yeah. uh, not right. Click that. This is why you want to use the shortcut control yeah. tab. Yeah. And put the. There's a shortcut to move layers from above to Come below. In, up and down. Oh, you know everything. She knows this all the shortcuts. This is the same as Illustrator, which is why I love it. <laughs> That's the same <laughs> shortcut as that. She knows all the shortcuts. That, that's actually why I was kind of writing on uh, on Twitter, where I was like, can we just have the same shortcut for the circle? Yeah. It's O for oval, E for ellipse, U on another app, and then another one, it's something yeah. else. We're like, trying. Can we just be We're a trying. T for circle? <laughs> <laughs> what shortcut would you prefer for the circle? I don't know. C it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It has to be if it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think everyone's designing because they're not sending us too many questions. Um, did you post your Instagram account before? What's your Instagram account? Oh, um, Tim is so fast. Oh, cool. He's yes, mine's Rum Willie. <laughs> yeah. And okay. There's something weird happening with the scrolling. I know it's it's the wrong 
Ah, Z index. It's oh, it's still the wrong thing. He gets I didn't put it on the top. I guess <laughs> that's oh. my fault. So and it works. Correct. Wow, it's perfect. But then now there's too much space. Oh. So I just need to fix it. This is like a constant edit of. of mm, that's why you need to switch back. Because you have a white box behind where right. you want it to scroll. Right. That's nice. Otherwise, it will look weird. Mm -hmm. You'll just you'll see the text mm -hmm. going through mm -hmm. it. Um, okay. Cool. Does this go back? And you gotta wear up the X. Oh, you did. Let me go back. Let's see. The challenge is for web today. Yesterday was for mobile. And tomorrow, actually, we're gonna do uh, portfolio reviews. I'm really excited about awesome. that one. Yeah. Yeah, so submit your portfolio to get reviewed. I think um, they have to do it tomorrow. But you can do it tomorrow? It okay. I think so. Yeah, so this, I want to make the top area bigger. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're doing my, my trick of invisible button. <laughs> yeah, actually that's, when you're drawing the icon in Illustrator, it's always best to draw the, ba the background yeah. bar, bomb, bounding box, mm -hmm. so it looks more accurate. Yeah, so at Adobe, we actually have a team that makes all our icons. Wow. And they deliver them at the right color, the right size, on the right, like, invisible button. Oh wow, really? Yeah, they they make icons and we just send them what we need. That's it's really, really awesome. cool. Yeah, so all our icons look the same. <laughs> I mean, we can use like different arrow for different apps. That's pretty awesome. I know. I, I can name a bunch of my friends that would be like their dream job is to just make icons well, all day long. Well, they should apply for a job. <laughs> <laughs> the make team icons. is based in Germany. Oh. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, I think Min Tran, the the, uh, the girl that emailed me about uh, reviews and where do I get UX readings, I think she's from Germany. Cool. Cool, okay. Let's check the X. Nope, I didn't wire it up. You can actually get stock icons from the stock, Adobe stock as well. Mm -hmm. um, they have tons of resources and templates. Mm -hmm. So how do you guys order your, your icon library? Do you guys use a software to kind of see all of them at once? Or? We have a website, oh, an cool. internal one, where you can see placeholder, but you always have to, I mean, mm -hmm. um, you always request anything that's missing, and the good thing about having one centralized team is that they are, they're the keepers of the icons. So if something changes, they always send you the new one, right? The so everybody keepers. has the new one. <laughs> it's really hard otherwise. Yeah, a big team. Sense. Yeah. Okay, start new order. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna check it one more time. Get started. Pick a color. Click that. Go follow. Click those. Click that. Filter. X out. X. Click that one. Scroll. Edit. Choose between the two. Mm, add to bag. Pay. And we're done. Oh wow, that was quick. Should we try it on the phone? Yep. Yeah. Let's see what it looks like on the phone, and... Okay, do you want to switch? Uh... So, if, obviously you need to download the XD app first, uh, and also you have to plug it in to your computer. Actually, and... if you add the file to CC files, so mm -hmm. Creative Cloud files, you mm -hmm. don't need to uh, plug it in. Oh, okay. But you need to have internet connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is, I mean, this is the quicker way, but you can do it both ways. So if you tap the second icon. It's a real app. <laughs> right. So now you can actually play with it phys manually or physically. Mm -hmm. Tap the button, tap the color you would like, tap the flower you would want, 
see a list. It's scrolling. To filter. filter. Exit out. Click the arrangement you would like. Scroll. Information. Edit the choices. Mm -hmm. Look to the flowers or the color. It's so nice. Add it to bag. And you do you know on X they actually like take a picture of your face. Oh yes. And it just checks out. So it's a little bit scary do you, sometimes. Do you want to hear something weird? My sister can also open my phone. <gasps> we don't look alike. Is does she is she a twin? No. She's nine years older and we don't look alike. How is that possible? I don't know. I know exactly how that's possible. <laughs> Maybe she took a picture of her face no. with your phone. No. No, I don't know. It's very How strange. Is that? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd be so scared. <laughs> I think I feel like if someone actually takes a picture and say mm -hmm. ID my face, that you might be able to open that. The, I the don't phone. know. It's strange. <laughs> but the app is looking awesome. It like it looks like a real app. I I'm amazed that you did this in two days. I mean, less well, than I, two I days. Did, I did not do this in two days. I just did this previously, and I wanted to just walk what? through yes. the whole process Let's so we yes. can get somewhere. Yes, but you did it really quickly. <laughs> I'm amazed at your speed anyways. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So that's how we just prototype something really quick. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. Um, another thing I thought was really cool to highlight is when you need to extract the um, the assets from the screen, right? There was a question earlier about how you send assets to engineering, mm -hmm. um, and what do they need? Yeah, so for the images and for any of these icons, they're different. So for mm -hmm. the icons, I actually export them as PDF, so that okay. they're resizable. Mm -hmm. So in order to create them in PDF, you could create them in Il Illustrator, or you can just click the icon you want. Mm -hmm. and then click this button here to export or batch export. Sorry, actually it's this one. Okay. Then you would click that, publish design specs. Mm -hmm. I actually have not used XD to publish design specs, so I'm really curious to see what... How do you send your assets to your engineers? Um, currently, I actually use another program to do that. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> We're in the Adobe office. <laughs> <laughs> um, in order to send the assets, actually, you could. Well, first, I would actually take a screenshot of the flow first, so right. they know what's coming up mm -hmm. or what's expected, and the mm -hmm. client. We're all on the same page, mm -hmm. and then, um, in terms of the assets, if we do it the old way, which we would just take that asset and we'll measure it out and we would annotate every single one. Oh, I think you can do that with the specs. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, I guess we'll see now. We usually give, I give the engineers just the XD file because they can oh, open just it. Oh, just the XD file? Yeah. I never, our engineers I never give do that. anyone our files. I don't know why. Maybe it's just I we're afraid that they'll do something to our right. files. Well, because working in-house, I think, is different, right? I think that there's a lot of times mm -hmm. where the client is like, can I have the file in PSD or the original file? And I almost never give it to them. Mm -hmm. There's n probably 99% of the time I don't give it to them because it would, number one, it's not because I don't want to share the file, is that they'll take the file, open it up, and then just design whatever they want to design and kind of throw our meeting and our objectives out of whack and kind of just design whatever they want to design and come back with their new ideas. But mm -hmm. they're always welcome to design it separately, just not from the file that we work on. <laughs> like they can do it on their own mm -hmm. or draw a sketch or do it, um, I don't know, do it in PowerPoint or whatever program they want to do. Uh, cool. Show that example. This is uh, creating a public link. Yep, it's taking, it, sometimes it takes a while. I mean, you had a lot of assets. Yeah. Maybe it's grabbing everything from my board because I, I actually... I think it is. Okay. So let's skip that for now and then move on to adding more features. To oh, the... yes. we got to get to features because we only have 20 minutes until we look at challenges. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So for the features for today, we're th I was thinking that 
we would do a couple of things. Um, these are the features I want to add. So the first one is um, the business would like to upgrade a size. So right now, there's only one size available. There's just the regular size. There's mm -hmm. no bigger size of the same one. So I'm thinking about adding a better, best, exquisite, which are just higher price point. And also the ability to upgrade and upsell the items with a vase. And also add in new tabs. So maybe they think that this flow is just too simple and they would like to add more stuff. So the first screen is going to be a discover screen that actually allows you to ID a flower or curate or personalize and favorite. It will mm -hmm. be a home for that. Um, the shop would be the flow that we just went through. That is actually the shop. And then the cart is the ability to add more than one arrangement at a time instead of just checking out one thing. Mm -hmm and um, the profile screen, which would be a place for us to put um, content as we add more things to the list. So we actually are showing us a real world scenario where the client will come in and be like, I want to add all these new features. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So starting with the easiest one is to just add the new tabs. Um, to add the new tabs, we take the icons that we created previously and just lay yesterday. it out. Yeah, so just lay it out. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's only four, maybe there's five. Just lay it out and then I would just start uh, the same process as yesterday. I would paste my ideas on the side so I can make sure that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then start with the wireframing process, which is pretty much uh, what we've done yesterday. But we do the same thing for these uh, upgrades. Um, so then, First, actually, I don't want to do the tabs because I actually didn't create any of the screens. Um, the easiest one, number one, is product detail. I want to add an upgrade size. So that's actually on the product detail page. Would you usually, so uh, let's say you have sold your client on this app, right? Mm -hmm. The beautiful visual design, you show them a prototype, and now mm -hmm. they want to add new features. Do you show them a wireframe with those new features or you just add them to the visual design? Don't show the wireframe at all to the features. Okay. I just make a duplicate. So whenever they approve something, that's actually one file. And then the next um, le next leap of features as I add them on, I create a new file. So I actually have multiple, tons of multiple files in case right. Um, they change their mind, mm -hmm. um, couple steps down, they want to go back to what they want be previously, maybe they want to add this one or that one so you can kind of not lose your work. So you never show wireframes at all? I never show wireframes. Because you want them to be placed in like the, the real scenario, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. You can show the wireframes and if you do show wireframes it's probably better if you show that during the discussion phase. Let's say they're coming to you and they're saying, I would like these new features. Um, it's probably best to like sketch it out really quick and get on the same page. Like, what do you mean by that? Do you mean this? Do you mean right. that? And just drawing it out quickly um, solves that. Uh, if there could, if mm -hmm. there is a misunderstanding, it clears it out quickly. Right. But in terms of like my work process of like where I set up the wireframe, that's really just for me to do. Okay. Just to kind of lay out the screen, but mm -hmm. it's not. Um, it's not something that I. Cool. That's like, good so. to know. What do you do? Do you? Um, well, do the wire show the? Well, sh depends. Does someone show? I think depends. Um, since we're on internal team, and depending on where the product is at, mm -hmm. um, and depending on who you're showing it to, <laughs> I think if you're showing it to other designers or product managers or sometimes engineers, you would show something like a wireframe. Mm -hmm. um, but depends. Lately, just visual designs, since we have everything laid out, it's much faster. I think anything that makes me show my idea fast, mm -hmm. that's that's been the rule. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, and there's people who think better in gray boxes. There's people who think better in full visual designs. So, depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So instead of the floating boxes that I made previously, which was only that UI worked well when it's just one shot straight mm -hmm. through, I'm kind of updating that and just making it not floating boxes. Oh. So they would not be locked positioning. So that would be my edit. 
oh, I would cool. like it to be in this top position. Okay. And maybe we don't um, we don't we make this mm -hmm. smaller. It is no longer simple where it's like add to bag and the price. We change that to just add to bag so we can create some space. Um, the edit button still stays, and then I create a new button. I just uh, ungroup it first, and then group it again. Mm -hmm. Type in the word. Maybe it's upgrade. Stretch this out, and then rename mm. this to upgrade button. There is a question about uh, UI UX course. For someone who's coming from a graphic design background, how do you migrate? Um, UX, U, UI UX course. Actually, sorry, I'd never actually taken a course, mm -hmm. but I know there are classes. There are classes. Uh, what, what I think is it general, um, so general. General Assembly, assembly does some. Yeah, stuff. they have some really good classes. I know um, people who have taught there actually, and they're very well respected. I mean, the the case to make a portfolio that represents what you want to do, um, not what you've been doing so much, but where you want to be headed. And tomorrow we're going to be looking at portfolios. So um, we'll have some good tips, hopefully. So if you want to be working on a certain type of project, you have to make that project to sell yourself as I am this person. Mm -hmm. So I just need to move this out of the way, even though um, it's still the content still exists, because I need to put in mm -hmm. the ideas of upgrade. Cool. Just rearranging the artboard is probably the number one thing that I do all the time. Just move it out of the way for now. Um, for the upgrade, I'm thinking we have the same interaction here. Okay. It's so gonna overlay. Just flip up. Yep. Is it overlay? Yeah. Yes, overlay. it's overlay. Yeah, we just copy that over, do an upgrade. So let me see. Yep. see. Yes, and XD is very, this is a really good tip actually uh, from Zach. Start, download XD and start practicing. It's super easy to learn. There's tons of resources online. Um, and I don't know, it's super intuitive. Um, unlike uh, some of our other applications. <laughs> So this is going to be my upgrade. Um, what I've done here is I actually Photoshopped this. Uh-oh. To make it look bigger. <laughs> but in reality, you should take a picture. <laughs> but it wouldn't look it wouldn't look realistic if it was different flowers. Right. So what I did was I actually went into, um, I took a photo. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see, assets, images, flowers. So you only Photoshopped the flowers. We kept the vase the same. Correct. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, that's I did a nice that, trick. Actually, I did that in Photoshop. So you know, yep. I, I would buy a stock photo from Adobe Stock, and then I would just Photoshop this area to make it look bigger. That's but in reality, idea. you should right. you should really take a picture. Right. But just for the sake of the. But at this stage, you're trying up. to sell your idea to the client. Mm -hmm. So maybe they don't have the budget yet, or they haven't quite agreed. So Photoshop is very handy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yes, Adobe is still developing Dimensions. Um, have you used Dimension? No, actually I have not. It's a really cool um, app. It's new. It just came out. V1 came out last fall. And it's perfect for graphic designers uh, because it's 3D for people who are thinking in 2D space. Oh, wow. So actually you could do this in Dimension. Oh, you can? Yes. It's, it's not... So you, when you like think of a 3D program, mm -hmm. that it's kind of hard to learn. This mm -hmm. is not the case. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's pretty intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, they have great onboarding. Mm -hmm. um, so try it out. And you can make packaging. So if you're trying, like if you're a graphic designer and you're trying to sell packaging to a client, or even like for something like this, I mean for UI UX designer, you could make that in uh, Dimension. Like oh. you would render the vase and then the flowers. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So w w let's say it's an image from this from stock. How would you cut that out? Is there tools that actually help it's, you do that? Dimension is is really easy for that. Yes, and it has integration with stock. It's oh, okay. actually easier than it is in XD. 
Oh, um, awesome. Yep. I need to check that out because I just Photoshop everything in Photoshop as that's my Because that's your tool. Tool. <laughs> that's your weapon of choice. That's my That's like the only weapon I have. <laughs> I don't know how to do it any better, but always looking to Yeah, you but know, you're you seem to be the type of designer who's always looking to learn new things. Oh, definitely. <laughs> that's and today the theme is to be brave. Yeah. Try new stuff. So, okay, so this is my overlay mm -hmm. for upgrading it. Mm -hmm. And this is the pop-up or the modal that shows the three price structure cool. and kind of what they are. So mm -hmm. you get 12 stems, 24, 38. Mm -hmm. And then when you select it, um, the next should be blue. The next becomes blue. Goes oh, actionable. It's actually, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Then I, it, I think what will happen is I want to upsell them on different bases. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a screen here and it would ask, would you like to upgrade a vase? So I'm working off of the assumption that a vase already comes mm -hmm. with the arrangement. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just um, apply my type layers. Are you going to show us the AR stuff tomorrow? Yeah, if we run out of time or I'll just work really fast. You still have nine minutes. Nine minutes. <laughs> Till we look at submissions. Okay. So you have time. I'm very excited about it. I'm doing it right now. Yesterday the AR is my my basis. It, yesterday we talked about comments from clients, and there was a really cool one. I forgot who said it. It was about a client's comment, make it more VR without being VR. <laughs> it's a new one. I never heard that one. That's funny. You're getting a compliment on how you are organizing your files. I oh, think. cool. Yes, I, I Keep agree. it organized because as, mm -hmm. as you build all these artboards, it just gets oh, ridiculous get and you don't know what where things mm -hmm. are anymore. So it's probably best to clean up the artboards after you've done one, one phase and right. it's a good stopping point. Okay, so here's the, my quote unquote AR Oh, it's coming? This is the screen? Yes, this is the screen. Yes. Make it more AR without being <laughs> AR. <laughs> well, one thing is that I don't I don't know if clients actually understand what is AR. So number but one. But they've heard the word. You, you, yes. Maybe this is a client that says, hey, you know, um, I want to do an AR mode, but I don't know what that means. And maybe we just explore it. Maybe it's not in my budget to do this. Mm -hmm. So you always have to have a good backup plan in case they don't want to do it. So this is what I'm doing now, which is giving them the backup plan. Mm -hmm. um, first, um, giving them the ability to choose the vase um, without uh, the AR mode. And the, the way to launch into it is clicking this icon here. Right. That says, see what it looks like in my room. Oh, that's cool. Um, so I can, they can see if, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I, like I said, I photoshopped the vases. Um, here they are. Oh, cool. So I took vases. I did you add the shadows too? Yeah. So nice. I just so they look have real. a separate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted the flower to be separate from the vase so that we could change the vases as you scroll. Right. So I just brought that into this file and on the side I have these vases. Oh cool. So, so you've it. prepped all your assets. Yes. Nice. So here, this is where I want the vase to appear. So drop this in here. So maybe this is what it looks like. Maybe this is the standard vase that you get and it's free. Cool. Is it a carousel that you're gonna flip through? Correct. Nice, so the flowers will appear. The flowers stay there as the vase changes. And the changes. vase is changing. Oh, that's changing. smart. I like that. So it's a little bit more fun and mm -hmm. you can kind of see um, the left and the right of like switching around and swiping through. Mm -hmm. So with the same idea here, I'm like, well, would you like to see in your room? And this is kind of like the VR mode. Yes. So the VR mode is Wait, like, AR. or AR it's mode, sorry, AR, AR mode. <laughs> First, just put in a picture of a kitchen. So 
grab a picture of a house. Mm -hmm. You can just drag it in. Maybe it's, that's a nice kitchen. I just took it from Google. But you can probably find one on stock too. Find one that you want to use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Place it in there somehow and put the bottom layer. And as I was saying, like maybe this customer or this business doesn't understand and doesn't know how much work it would it would take to do this. So this is sort of like a separate like to have option. Right. So you're showing the client like a the crazy version. Yes. So I'm showing two versions. Right. Sort of like the normal version, not mm -hmm. the normal version. So the way I'm envisioning this is that this is actually um, it moves up and down. Okay. The scroll bar. So it's a tray. It's a tray. Yes. And then we're gonna put this same asset over here. Uh huh. And when you look at that in the asset, it you can actually say it looks the same. I mean, it looks the same in terms of you can change the vases and the ordering of the vase. And I want to keep the functionality of. Oh, like quickly swiping? Quickly swiping through the vase mm -hmm. and seeing what's available. I like that. So, this is so, so cool. what I would do is just turn it off. Yep. Yep. Oops. Oh, welcome to anyone who's new to the chat. Uh, we have Cat designing an awesome app, second day in a row. <laughs> cool. So I just delete the flower from there. And. Oh, nice. So you're going to have the carousel on the bottom. So same and then interaction you're swiping. of the nice. swipe. So you're teaching the user that that's how you go through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice to keep it consistent, right? So the idea is that when you're moving around your kitchen, this supposedly will resize and, and scale in and place itself. Yeah. Can so you, you do can, that in dimension? You can mm -hmm. definitely make those assets in dimension. Oh. Yes. Okay. And they have the background too. So you can add that image to the background so you oh. can place it in the perfect spot. And nice. it's, yes. I have to learn that after mm -hmm. today. Yep. That's your brave new brave moment. I'm, be, yeah. <laughs> I'm very learn curious tonight. about that because I, I was like, well, this is really the low tech version of yes. how I would put it together. Um, if there's any way to improve my workflow, mm -hmm. please was, let me know. Yeah, I mean, this is why the team designed the application is to help people who are more 2D mm -hmm. become 3D without having to spend months and months learning that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so I have that done, and to add the arrows, I yep. And it looks like we have some dimension users. Cool. Oh, awesome. Nice. Tell us what you do. Um, what do you design in dimension? Um, uh, AR. And uh, yeah, and, and all lots of AR. Like yes. what kind of projects in AR do you? Have you ever tried to place a furniture in your house? So I read yesterday that in um, AR games. Oh, cool. cool. Games. Um, on Amazon, mm -hmm. they have that new ability now. When you click the camera button, you can actually put furniture in your house. Yeah. And the place IKEA, it. So IKEA has an app that's actually really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They could do that. And Nathan also did a furniture app. Nice. Cool. Yeah, share with us what that looks like. Um, is it yeah. live? Is it in production? You still it, working does it on it? Is it NDA? Because <laughs> that's usually what you can show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is starting to look so good. We're gonna look at submissions cool. soon. Okay. NDA, yeah. Nathan. Yeah, that's that's the reality. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, because you're trying to exit. Mm hmm Yep. Like, have to find a way to get out of here. Cool. <laughs> I'll do a mock-up and try to make mimic it. <laughs> Gives me reason to play with XD. That's cool. Yes, if you want us to look at your designs, um, send us 
if you're ready, uh, send us your submissions. We will look at them. Uh, but if you need more time, because I realize that today's challenge might be more difficult um, and it takes more time, um, you can definitely send them for the rest of the day. Um, we have two more segments, so we won't look at the submissions, but um, we will definitely announce a winner tomorrow because we get to do that in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. So keep designing and please send us questions um, in the chat. What are you going to do after the AR? Oh, that's nice. Well, I wanted to do another screen so that I could say, do well, it. this one's more expensive. Do it. So I can change the price. Do it. Well, it's really easy. You just co cool. I just copied it and then just changed. Like, OK, I want it to be mm -hmm. $20 more for this. OK. Cool. Um, that would be that. Check it out and add to cart. And then everything else sort of stay intact for now. Cool. So you've added one or two new features. You added two new features. Only one on this one. Oh, oh. two new, yeah. Two new. I added the Better Vest Exquisite price point, and then I did the VR for the add-on for the vases. Mm -hmm. I've not done the last one yet. The last one is when we're going through and adding the tab bar, because now that oh, we yes. know Delete that one. Yeah. We know um, sort of how this is going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So d actually, that's probably the, do we have enough time to show? We that? have, we okay. have. That, that's actually probably the easiest thing, is just copy this tab bar that I've already made into a simple and just paste it. OK, let's <laughs> do it. Uh, yes, so the challenge is posted in the third tab. Uh, so chats first, seconds info, and the third one is the challenge. You can download a template. Uh, get XD for free and design two plus screen experiences for a fashion blog website. And you can send your submissions today until 2.30. And um, you will get reviewed and you have a chance to win a Creative Cloud subscription for a whole year. And that, that will include all the apps, which is very exciting. And yes, you can get dimensions in that. Um, in that subscription plan. So you've added the tabs. This I just is like pasted a it in there. an iOS <laughs> standard. You just pasted it. Oh, she's done. <laughs> no, no. It just, I just pasted it into the the shop. Yeah. Uh, flow. So mm -hmm. we still need to make you know some changes to the stuff we just added. So let me ask you, what's your opinion on the bottom tab versus the hamburger navigation? <laughs> That's a favorite designer. Uh, question? Question, or just something people like to argue on the internet. Oh, yeah. About. I mean, people argue about a lot of stuff on the internet, yep. especially Twitter. Um, so my take is if it really depends on the situation. So if you only have one or two uh, tabs areas, you probably don't need a tab. That's period. why you didn't have it, right? So I didn't have it. Mm -hmm. I did that on purpose. I didn't want that. It's just a one shot straight line. Mm -hmm. um, as you start creating more content, I typically just start adding tabs mm -hmm. and deciding if all of the features that the client is asking for would fit into five tabs. Um, if they don't fit into the five tabs, you can always say, OK, can we categorize the, the, the data or the, the amount of information you want to present into groups? So mm -hmm. a lot of people actually, the last tab, they do like a more or even like a hamburger, which is cool. like what I would call the, the drawer, mm -hmm. the junk drawer, where they put settings, profile, you mm -hmm. know, any kind of like personal information, payment information, um, which are not super important in the beginning or are right, right. in the first flow. Um, so then te technically you only have four tabs right. for content. Um, right. I think when people can't decide what to do, they always say, all right, for the sake of it, let's just make a hamburger. Yeah. And then put everything into the hamburger menu. And then if you do that, well, each element, each row could have its own tab. 
-hmm. So you just increased it by like five times or 20 times, 30 times. Um, it does make things more complicated, but I can see use case if you're a business and you're enterprise, and you need a lot of stuff on the screen. Navigation, yeah. You can do the hamburger, yep. but also the downside of a hamburger is that it's just not, it's not very visible because it's not on the right. screen. Right, everything's hidden. So mm -hmm. a lot of people say it's not good because it, it hides everything in there. Yep. But I feel like if you start out with just a hamburger, um, mm -hmm. it not, might not be a good idea because people are just not going to go through the app. Right. So actually, that this exact scenario happened with one of my apps. Um, the thumbnail of my image, the picture of the, the dogs and cats. Oh, okay. Um, that was a pet adoption um, application where they wanted to showcase animals and shelters. Should we pop into it really quick? Oh. Do you have it easy? Yeah. And in the beginning, the client was like, I would like a hamburger. Well, actually, no, they, they, they still kept the hamburger. They oh. want the hamburger. Okay. And they wanted to make it a simple kind of design. So they kind of opted for the Tinder UI design, which is oh, one card. Oh, it's like card. Tinder for dogs. Yeah. Oh, for pets. Yeah, so these, oh. these animals are sheltered <laughs> animals. So basically, they're kind of like surfacing like which animals are available mm -hmm. in which shelter, which area. So they're trying to keep it simple by mm -hmm. showing like that, you know, it, this is a filter. So it's your location, what kind of animal you want mm -hmm. to, to adopt. And then you can swipe, you can swipe, but you actually cannot decline the animal. You can't, sw you can't say you, can, you don't like, you can't you don't like this animal. Way? You cannot be like, so I don't, you can only, you can only swipe. skip them. You oh. can't X them out. You can't X out oh. this puppy. <laughs> <laughs> you can like oh. them or skip them, and then it, it kind of uh, goes back to the, mm -hmm. the end of the deck, mm -hmm. and it shows back up again. That's so cute. But yeah, they have this um, like uh, understanding of like, oh, mm -hmm. what, should I do a hamburger? Should I do a tab bar? You know, should I take everything out and then put it outside? Um, it's really. It, it sometimes when you have too much information, you put it outside. Mm -hmm. It's actually not good. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on how you want to organize it. Mm -hmm. There's some questions about the challenge. You can keep submitting. Don't stop. Um, we, you can submit until 2.30 today. And yes, use your B hands, <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> OK, cool. cool. Thank you for the little um, hamburger, hamburger no, versus hamburger. tabs <laughs> story. I feel like that's a commonly argued. Oh point. yes, yes. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So yeah, we added that, and then sort of like the shop icon here and the cart icon is sort of. Did you make those? Yeah, I just drew them. Oh in. yeah, you showed me yesterday. Yeah. I love the little flower shop one <laughs> and the discover. So the Discover one is the one I haven't made yet, so we could start making that. Um, you haven't made it? You have a little leaf. Oh, I mean the content of the, oh, the streams. Oh, oh, oh. So the I only have the shop one. This, okay. this is the shop mm -hmm. flow. Okay. The cart, don't have anything. Right now, but maybe, using maybe the Pay. cart just <laughs> goes to that. You're doing Apple Pay, right? So that's one of the, up, the updates we yeah. probably not need to make. And then the profile is probably just a list view of what the profile will be, so mm -hmm. I made that. So really the more simple. fun one's probably the browsing experience. Correct. Okay. Let's do the fun one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and XD has updates every month. They actually release updates every month with new features. They're oh, one cool. of those teams that are like, yeah, we, we release every month. <laughs> So we'll make the first tab. Yes. Cool. So yeah, make the first tab. Um, yes. I yet yeah, I did use the XD also without the layers. <laughs> XD without layers. Oh yes, wow. Yes, they have. That was the first one of the first versions. Um, it was it actually worked well. There were not a lot of features, but got the job done. 
So did you just move theirs up and down? Yeah, I was using the. Them? I was using the shortcuts. Yeah, that's how I learned the shortcuts. You could group them, I think. Yeah, but there was just no layers panel. Now it's so much easier, and the assets panel is awesome because right now you're just doing Adobe magic <laughs> by using the symbols. Actually, no, it's not a symbol. It's a character style. Sorry, I spoke the wrong term. <laughs> Okay, so change. Adobe Kadabra, exactly. <laughs> Wait, did someone send that to you? Yeah, they said uh, another day of Adobe Kadabra. I'm like, that's right, another day. Yeah, hi everyone new who just joined. Kat is designing with us for another uh, actually 15 minutes. Cool. Um, but we'll be back tomorrow, and there's two more. Um, Adobe live sessions after us, right after actually. So stay here and you can uh, design because we have a new challenge today. It's the third tab and uh, you can design two plus screens for a fashion blog website. Uh, we have a template, there's a link how to get XD for free and uh, tips on how to publish a prototype and that's how you share it. Uh, until 2.30 today, so you have a chance to get your work reviewed and tomorrow we're going to look at portfolios, so um, we will be giving tips and advice on how to have a, a good portfolio for UI UX. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So it did a repeat grid. My favorite thing in the world. Oh, yes. <laughs> and this is the discovery page. So the discovery page, what I want to do is, um, since the original flow was more focused is in one direction of just shopping and picking what you want to do and, and, and what you want, and then seeing the, um, the arrangements, I was thinking that, you know, after you purchase once, why would someone come back again mm -hmm. if they don't want to purchase again? Um, it doesn't really kind of engage them in any way to, or give them any incentive in any way to come back because there's no content. Mm -hmm. So one way, or one idea that you could do for to improve the app is to just have one screen that I'm currently calling the discovery screen like a browser where experience. You, yeah so mm -hmm. you could do a, a bunch of stuff you could mm -hmm. you can pre, pro, um, provide content editorial content about flowers or anything uh, upsell marketing items that you want to add so the first part of that was another one of my cool the cool ideas is to identify this flower IDs mm -hmm. plant so basically I created an icon here which is the icon of discover um, the plant the idea is you tap that, you get the camera roll. Mm -hmm. um, so I go and I got this image from Adobe Stock. Nice. Oops. Should just draw and pick a square first. Then drop it in. And it's always a good idea to actually mock the real experience for the. Uh, camera. So if you're designing for iOS, it would be the iOS camera. For Android, the Android camera. Right. Try to make it, well, the point make is it. to make it as realistic as possible mm -hmm. using the kit provided. So the sizing is accurate and yep. buttons are in the right place and the patterns are correct. Mm -hmm. So, yep. There's a question of buttons. Should they be, what is your opinion on round versus rectangle? <laughs> I think someone asked me this yesterday. This is, a, this is another good one. <laughs> what was your answer? I, I don't think I ever asked you. Do you like the round or the rectangle? Oh, or the pill I'm, shape? I'm poisoned by the Adobe style. Ours are rounded. <laughs> I guess ours are rounded. Uh, I am not supposed to have an opinion. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Depends on like what you're trying to achieve. And um, yeah, I think it depends on the situation. You had a, a good, actually a good response yesterday about the rounded corners. Yeah, I mean, typically the square is pretty serious mm -hmm. and business-like if you want to kind of uh, convey of a, you're a part of a bank, it's probably not 
nice to have a rounded button. Mm -hmm. um, but you can always make it less serious by having the radius be just a little bit rounded and not so much. So you can do like a four, mm -hmm. number four radius instead of a six or 12. I think when you're starting to get really rounded at uh, 12, you might as well just go all the way and make it a pill shape. Yep, yep. I'm doing the pill shape now because I'm thinking that this is more of a fun app, so I'm trying to not make it that serious, so mm -hmm. I made it into a pill shape. Yep. Um, but yeah. Also, you know, the whole, another thing that you asked me yesterday about the drop shadow of a pill, of a Oh, button. yes. This uh, flat design versus three-dimensional. Yeah, so, I mean, this, this pill floating idea this, mm -hmm. was, was really just an MVP. Like, I'm just going to start making something and put it there. But I actually, if you're following patterns, really, you should be putting next on the top title bar, next, next, back, yep. and have these very flat. So then now I have a little bit of inconsistency and say, all right, well, what if it's like the hashtag mm -hmm. or it's the type? Uh, having these buttons all lined up in a pill shape with a drop shadow is pretty intense. Yes. When you see it all at once. Yeah. So maybe this design here is just not ideal. Right. It's just a placeholder for now until mm -hmm. you can fix the visual graphic of that and then improve it. Yeah. Even here, right here, I mean, it, does not look that nice. But when you look at it, you're like, okay, I get what it's doing. So right. I can at least wire it up and right. check it out to see the flow and really just come back at the end after you got an approval that and, and make it better. Right. And you also need to kind of see how your content's going to fit in because right. you you're, you created these buttons before mm -hmm. you made the actual app. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's always back. a back and forth, back mm -hmm. and forth uh, editing of components. Like maybe this is just one thing that I tried out. I don't like it now. And that's the beauty of this thing. I can just edit the symbols and everything will update. And these are all symbols, right? Yeah. So you can change the color and they'll all update right. Right. in your document, which is super so like, nice. I don't, the client's like, I don't want blue. What do they I want? want? Pink. They want pink. They will update everywhere, which is Actually, really nice. Yeah. So, I don't want to. No, don't don't change the blue. <laughs> blue is good. Stay with blue. What's everyone's favorite color? That's another favorite. Yesterday we blue. asked about font. I can ask again. Font and color. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Continuing adding. Midnight black. Teal. Nice blue. Midnight Teal. black. Gray? <laughs> With a sad face. <laughs> Lavender? What kind of gray? Slate gray? Blue? Medium gray? Nice. Dark gray? Mm. Any blue shade. So your nice. design is very popular today then. With most Blue's people. Blue pretty, is pretty <laughs> safe. That's blue is safe. That. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's like, who's going to hate on blue? Mm hmm. So what are you going to be showing us tomorrow? Yeah, so in a real life situation, I would wire this all up, have it all wired, show it to my um, client, which is Paula Inc. And they'll give me some harsh feedback or they'll love it. And we want to go through sort of what, what do we actually do? How do we take that feedback? Mm -hmm. and? write an actionable item, item list to say, okay, well, this is what they're saying and um, this is how we're going to edit it. So it's a constant iteration of not just the flow, the styling, and everything that we're doing today, just again and again until they are happy with it. And the prototyping, editing of the styles, the artboards, it sort of goes in part of that. Mm -hmm. So. One thing I can already tell you, sometimes you can see around the corner, and that's an important aspect of being a designer, is kind of knowing what the client wants before they ask for it. Or maybe you're presenting um, them a better experience, having the flow be very complete from beginning to end, and really looking at the screens and say, did I really cover every single case? Can the buttons, all of these buttons be tapped? Can they go backwards, forwards? And it's not a really good idea to have 
it wired only going one direction, like how, how I've just demonstrated, because in actual life, people are tapping on every button, every yep. thing. So you have to make all of that wired up. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're not like freaked out when they can't go back, can't exit. Um, so I feel like uh, you should design every case possible. So that would, basically you just have a ton of screens. So you're covering <laughs> all edge cases. Yeah. yeah. So what is a typical feedback question that you ask your clients during the handoff? Or um, do they ask you more of the, more of the questions? Yeah. So definitely there are questions and phrases that you should not say to the client, such as... What are those? Do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> you laugh because it literally is the worst question in the world. Um, you shouldn't ask if they like it okay. because the point is not to like it. Uh -huh. The point is, does it do what you asked mm -hmm. it to do? Mm -hmm. So you really need to control the conversation and you need to sell the presentation, first of all, definitely don't just give them the prototype and then watch them go through it. Right, because you're not doing user testing. Yeah, so you really want to set them up and explain in mm -hmm. detail what mm -hmm. they're about to see, mm -hmm. reiterate um, what they're asked for. So for example, if I'm presenting this, I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna present you a prototype now that allows you to pick color type and see the arrangement and check out quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've also added ability to upgrade the sizing so it would, you can charge more per arrangement and the ability to add a vase. And the key is to not make it too complicated and always get feedback quickly after one or two features. So you're not saying like five features at once. So I'm not saying a lot where they're just lost. Um, every single time you have one or two things added, you need to show that progress mm -hmm. and then get feedback. And this is the way that they will feel like they're a partner they're yeah. and they're not just uh, someone, I'm not someone that is hiding in a cave and just design and then come out and it's already done. Yeah. And so they always have to be involved in the, um, the whole process. Mm -hmm. Cool. There's a question if you're a freelancer or work at an agency. Yeah, right now I'm self-employed. I, I work for myself, but my majority of my client um, is from Martian Craft, and they're an agency. Um, the agency works on different clients, and I'm assigned to one of their mm -hmm. projects. And we basically uh, just we just deal with the client one-on-one. Mm -hmm. -on -one. Okay. And I had a moment in which I was like, wait, who's on the left? Is it me or is it you? Because <laughs> it's flipped. <laughs> yeah, I read that. I'm like, is it you? <laughs> yeah, and I'm a, a design manager at Adobe. So I'm on the other side, I'm on the internal side. Mm -hmm. Very different life. We do lots of user testing. So it's interesting because what you just wired up, like I would show to someone that I'm trying to get feedback from and be like, here it is. Mm -hmm. How would you do a certain task? And then watch them use it. Mm -hmm. And then if they ask me a question, what does it do? I'm like, what do you think it does? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do, definitely do that too. And But then it depends on the person. Yeah, Because my clients are really no, local. but but that's different. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not trying to sell it. I'm just trying to get feedback, honest feedback. Because if our product is out in the wild, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. we don't. We're not there to sell it anymore. So it's a different perspective, mm -hmm. which I think is super interesting. I've really enjoyed talking to you uh, this past two days, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to learning something tomorrow too. Yeah, awesome. We still so have two I have minutes. the I have my <laughs> fake ID. Machine learning idea. What's your? Oh, is that is that the one that we're it. showing right now? Yes. Yeah, so. Oh, so you're designing. We're chatting, and you're like, I'm done. <laughs> well, this is obviously not done in any means. Mm -hmm. Just like some mock-ups. Cool. But basically, the idea is you point your camera at a flower in the wild, mm -hmm. and then it'll ID it, or it'll give you some suggestions as to what you th what it thinks it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's lavender. Maybe it's violet. 
and it's asking you to check it off if you think that this is correct mm -hmm. or X, which is not. So eventually what I want to do is to be able to add a heart or save this plant as you realize that is actually a lavender. And the point of saving these is cool. basically then I can build my or rebuild my discovery page where it would be more tailored to you if, mm -hmm. if it's showing you things that you actually like and not just cool stuff. Uh, so maybe we can go through that tomorrow early yeah. morning. Cool. Uh, so it looks like we have to wrap up for today. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, this was so good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for everyone for the great questions. Uh, we're looking forward to being with you tomorrow again at 9 and we're going to be looking at portfolios. So uh, please send us your portfolio if you want us to review it. Uh, Kat will continue designing and then we still have two more segments so stay tuned. Uh, we have, should we look through quickly through the schedule? Do we have a second? Yes. So stay tuned. We have uh, at 11, which is in five minutes, we have Lauren and at one, Josh. So don't drop off and continue designing. So send your designs. Uh, see you tomorrow. Thank see you. you. Tomorrow. Bye. Bye.